Hello, and welcome to Guinevere's Studio. In this video, I'm working on another small study. I went a little bit more interesting with this one and used some origami paper lucky stars to create a little still life and then painted that one and I added a little bit of extra flair trying to make one of the stars glow. I started out drawing everything in as usual and I really wanted the larger stars to be kind of muted and more like in the shadows so that the central star that was glowing would stand out a lot more. Getting in my shadow shapes and all the darker colors first, it always gives me a good place to start. It's like I've got to get those dark colors in first. Even though I try to do a quick study every day, they don't always turn out to be super quick. And this one actually ended up taking quite a bit longer than I had anticipated. But because of all the different stars and different colors on each one, it just took a lot of extra mixing and planning and rendering to get it to look the way I wanted it to look. I think this is a really fun example of something interesting and different that you can do with still life. Still life doesn't have to be a vase and a water glass and a bowl or something totally boring. Paint the things that are around you, the things that you use every day, the things you enjoy, the things that you admire. And for me, I really like these little paper stars. I like making them and I have a whole collection of them. What do you have around you that you really like? Some people collect little figurines. Well, paint those. Paint the things that you really love. One of the fun things about painting these stars is that they have all these different facets. So there's a lot of different shades and values involved. Now you can watch in real time as I paint this little half star over on the edge. I started with a nice layer of sort of the mid-tone for this. I wanted to get the edge covered first and then work my way in from the edge of the canvas. Next, I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker color to show that this backside of the star point is in shadow. Then I bring in a little bit more of the light colored background to clean up my shape. Notice how frequently I go back to the palette to get more paint on my brush. Once I finish up with the background color, cleaning up the edges a little bit, then I'm gonna bring in my light side color. So the sides of the star that are facing towards the light are gonna be the brightest. I've cut out the time that it takes me to mix up these colors so you don't have to wait. If you're curious about color mixing, my color wheel video is a great video to learn more about mixing colors. Now you can see a little mistake. I had a darker color on my brush from brushing up against the dark area and it got into my light so I gotta fix that. Now I'm bringing in a warmer, more saturated color to be the really lit area. It's not so bright from the light, but it's not in shadow either. And I barely am brushing the top of the canvas. So if you look at the bristles and watch how they don't bend a lot. I'm not pressing very hard at all. Notice how I'm varying my brush strokes. Occasionally they're small, and then occasionally they're more bold and straight across. This is sort of a mixing of two styles. In the alla prima style, you do use more bold and straight type of brush strokes. Whereas in realism, you would want to use smaller, tighter brush strokes to blend and mix. I learned oil painting in the alla prima style, which is bolder, thicker paint and have developed a more subtle realism after my education. Now we're gonna speed things up a bit. I struggled a bit on this glowing star because obviously there isn't a glowing star in my studio that I can work from. So I kind of had to make it up and figure out what would it actually look like. I had to guess a little bit and sort of just make it up. This again is a great reason to do studies so that I could practice on the small painting 
rather than working on some larger, more ambitious painting. If you're just starting out, or even if you've been painting for years, small paintings are a great way to just practice, practice, practice. They say that practice makes perfect, but I think that in this case, your practice can be really fun and can actually just kind of be the point of painting in general. Give yourself the opportunity to explore and play. So you can see here how I tried it one way, it didn't look quite right, so I painted over it and did it a different way. Here I thought, no, that doesn't quite look right. It looks like it's floating and I don't want it to be floating. I just want it to be glowing. So guess what? I painted over. So this one I did have to come back the next day and redo the star part. I hope you enjoyed this journey through another daily painting and I'll be back next week with another one. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much, see you next week.